If you're into real estate investing or just flipping homes, you know that nothing beats a good foreclosure. Well, unless you're getting foreclosed on, sorry about that. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Zillow to find lists of foreclosures in any market and how to legally scrape them into a spreadsheet without violating the Zillow terms of service using our freemium tools. Step one is to go to Zillow's homepage and then click on this buy button here and you'll see foreclosures. It will default to showing you foreclosures in your local area. Right now I'm in Las Vegas, but you can remove it and also add other locations so you can see foreclosures from different cities. Just keep adding as many cities and or zip codes as you like and Zillow will adjust the map to show you everything in your search range. So by default, Zillow is only showing me a measly 32 results, but I believe there's more than that in all of Nevada. So click on this more icon here and it's gonna show you how exactly it's filtering. By default, Zillow only shows foreclosures by agent. We can check foreclosed and pre-foreclosures. These two will not be by agents. You have to click this thing by owner and other to get the real payload of 426 results. At this point, you're free to manually browse through them on Zillow, but if you're watching this, you're probably interested in exporting this into a spreadsheet so we can do some custom analysis and sort them by things like price difference versus estimate. To do that, right click on the page and hit inspect here. This is gonna open up developer tools and click on this network tab here. And I usually click on this little clear button on the upper left hand side. That way we can clear everything out and start fresh. Before you scrape the data, double check all the results are here. Sometimes the network pane will screw up the map. So zoom out if that's the case. And then make sure you have all the results here, all 426. Hit clear again so we can start fresh. And then just slide the map over to reload the results. And that way they'll be captured under the network tab and we can export them so we can scrape them. If you wanna see, you can sort this by size and scroll up the way to the top. And you'll see this get search page state.htm and everything's in here. All 426 foreclosures are in this payload. To get them out, click this icon here called export HAR and save the file somewhere. To get the data out of the HAR file, check the link in the description to this page here. Disclaimer, I own this service. And just drag and drop your HAR file into this page. It will auto magically identify the interesting data and allow you to parse it into a CSV file. You can see get search page state.htm corresponds to what we saw. And we only have one request here. This is very important. You only want one or else you may get duplicates. Once you've confirmed this is the data you want, click this parse group button here and you can see a preview of this data totally for free on our public webpage. We can see it parsed out 424 rows. I think that difference of two is due to these ads that are intermingled in here possibly, but hey, it's close enough and we probably have everything we need to find some foreclosures we can use for our investment purposes. Upon closer look, we can see the data gives us the price listed on zero, number of beds and bathrooms, basic square footage and area, whether it's pre-foreclosure or foreclosed on or foreclosing, there are three different statuses. You can also see the detail URL here. So you put in zillow.com and then paste in the URL. You can actually go directly to the listing here and get in touch with the agent if you want to purchase it. And a few more interesting fields are gonna be the Zestimate, which you can compare to the actual price listed to see if it's a good deal or not, if in fact you trust the Zestimate score. You also get the exact address as well as the coordinates you can plug in somewhere if you wanna do some analysis on that local area, because real estate's all about location. You can also see the type of property, e.g. single family. Again, the status is over here in another field. And you can also see days on Zillow if that's populated as well as a few other interesting fields such as the size of the lot. If you're looking to just purchase land, this may be helpful. There's also this tax assessed value. I would double check on Zillow what this means, but you, again, you can compare it to the listing price as well as with this estimate. And to download this as a CSV file, just punch in your email here and you can download 10 rows of data for free. This is what it looks like when you're logged into your account and you can click this download button here. Once you have a spreadsheet, you can open it up in Excel or Google Sheets and see all the same fields we did before. You can make derivative columns like Zestimate minus price. And you can also sort this, for example, by asking price. So we can look at the cheapest ones first and then maybe pursue those. All right, 24,000, that's more in my price range. So if I actually wanna look at this on Zillow, I can open up this field again, which shows me the full URL. Just put in zillow.com and then paste in this URL part here and we can see the actual listing on Zillow corresponding to what we saw in the spreadsheet. It's also a good way to verify fields if we're not sure of what they mean. And we can try this with all of these different URLs or this would be a good way if we wanna split up this work to our team. Now, if you wanna get in touch and possibly purchase this property, you have to use the Zillow website as far as I know. You can't really get this in the spreadsheet. So you have to click on this button or there may be a different button based on what you're viewing and then we'll put you in touch with an agent that can help you acquire that property. And I'm sure there's a lot of other interesting things you can do with this data. It's probably best used if you wanna prioritize which foreclosures to purchase. You probably can't afford all 426. 
So you can be creative here. I've just seen a lot of customers scrape this data. I have no idea exactly how people are using it, but I'm sure it's proprietary and hopefully this video has helped you give you some ideas. Thanks for watching until the end. Be sure to like and subscribe.